Though played on a frozen lake, but that's what's taking place in the Swiss ski resort this weekend. Despite a light-hearted snowball fight, there was a deadly serious reason behind the British bobsleigh team's presence in Saint Moritz. For this week, decided the final composition of the team for next month's Winter Olympics. Only two of the three British drivers can race at Calgary. One of them, Tom de la Hunty, who'd already gained enough points during the Fosters World Cup series this winter to qualify for the two-man Olympic event, talked anxiously to the British team's sponsor about a steering problem with his bob. Going down into the first corners where there's no pressure. The only pressure on the, on the sled is, is your own body weight sitting mm. in it. Mm. There's no problem at all. It felt lovely. Mm. felt straight, felt good around the early corners. Mm. As soon as you got down to coming off sunny... And you've got the forces You've on got it. the centrifugal force pushing your, yeah. you know, yeah. and then the steering locks up. Right. And if you go under horseshoe, you have to force it down, right. force the steering back again. Right. In, on straights, when it's just your own weight, it's fine. Yeah. It, doesn't, it feels like well, that. Once it's taken apart, it shouldn't be... Yeah. I can't see any problems with it. I think this should be quicker than this car. The aerodynamics are beautiful. Yeah. I, do, I, I really think this, this steering is faulty. Right. Okay. If that can well, be sorted out, I don't see any reason why this shouldn't that. be good. as good as any other state in the world. Yeah. It was snowing heavily in Saint Moritz at lunchtime yesterday, a factor which threatened to make the track slow and unresponsive. There was even the possibility that the Olympic trial would be called off. Halfway down the run, team manager Mo Hammond watched anxiously as some luge riders tested the surface. I'm just looking to see how much snow is actually in the track. Because if there's too much, then it makes the race a farce. It's not looking too bad at the moment. And if the snow will stop, and as soon as I say that, it starts to snow twice as heavily, um, it could be OK, but you can't tell at the moment. It's difficult. I mean, just look at it now. The snow is really coming down. Yeah, you're going to be filmed, as usual. The outstanding British team this season has been that of the British Army, whose driver, Corporal Mark Tout, walked the 1,200-metre-long track as the snow flurries eased. Like Dillahunty, Tout had already qualified for the two-man event at Calgary and was far enough in front to make him a certainty for the four-man as well. Um, well, obviously, I've got to be very, very pleased with the whole thing. We've had uh, five selection races so far, and in the two-man, the four-man, obviously, I'm, you know, I've done well in the points and uh, got selected. I'm sitting very comfortably for the race today. How have you managed to do that, to come from third driver to first driver in one season? Um, I, th I think it's... Sort of, it's starts back in the summer. I mean, the team, we, the team got together in, uh, in the early part of May. We trained ath with, with athletics, weight training, then pushed back to right for the summer. We had a lot of support from our sponsors, Save and Prosper. Um, the management's been very good. The coaching's been very good. I just think the general picture all around has been, you know, the support's been very, very good. You're going to the Olympics now as Great Britain number one driver. What chances do you think you've got there of finishing in the top three? Um, I, I mean, our greatest chance is in the four man. We have a, we have a, we have a world class start. The equipment's very very good. I think a, you know a good draw you know, and a little bit of lady luck. We can we can at least come in the top six. That's that's our real hope. And anything above that is a bonus. Tom Delahunty knew as he started the first of his two runs down the 1200 metres St Moritz track that he had to beat Nick Phipps, the Great Britain number one driver, at the start of the season to make sure he'd join Mark Tout in both events at Calgary. Tom's crew have consistently been the fastest starters of the three British crews, and the first of his two runs gives him a crucial 19 hundredths of a second lead over Nick Phipps. 109.09. I'm feeling great. The, uh, you know, we've done well in the selection now. We're selected to compete in the games. My team are, are ecstatic. You'll probably hear them in the hotel very shortly, whooping it up. And uh, we're just really pleased to be going to Calgary now. We can't wait. Are you going to Calgary, though, with a chance of finishing in the medal positions? Well, I'm sure we are. You know, our sponsors, uh, Allied Steel, have developed new sleds for us, new runners, and they've done it out of patriotism. Uh, it costs an awful lot of money. It's cost hundreds of thousands of pounds to develop the sleds we've got, and they've put us in with a real chance, something that no other sponsor we've had has done. Go, 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 go. The pressure's really on Phipps at the start of his second and final lauf. If he doesn't beat De La Hunty, he'll almost certainly not qualify for the Olympics. With the track difficult to drive, and only two instead of four laughs making up the trial, Phipps fails to make it by just eight hundredths of a second. The sense of desolation shown by Nick Phipps and his crew contrasts strongly with the jubilation shown by Tom Delahunty and Mark Tout. 
Well, Mick, you're looking suitably downcast. What happened in that second and final laugh? Uh, we went, unfortunately, the sled came out at the, at the grooves, slid around the first corner, and then it set me up wrong for the whole straight, and I banged twice going down to wall, and I was about half a second behind the other lads before I even got to this first corner. So that really, that really finished it, yeah. You really needed to win this one to make sure of a place in Calgary. What's going to happen now? Um, I certainly did need to win it, yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. At this moment, I wouldn't like to say what I was going to do, but uh, I hope um, I hope I can, you know, maybe ride in Calgary. I don't know. You looked, and the rest of your crew, enormously disappointed at the end. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not been a good year. Um, started off badly, uh, and then we had some good form in Trevinia, and now, you know, I don't know what happened, really, to be honest. I'm not quite sure yet. Moa's team manager, we've just talked to a very disappointed Nick Phipps. What's his position now in the British team? As it stands with the point system, he is number three. Does that mean he doesn't get a ride at Calgary? It means he doesn't get a ride uh, unless some unforeseen circumstances occur at Calgary. This, that's why you take a reserve. This surely must be the biggest upset in British bobsleighing history. Yes, very much so. Quite a very much a surprise. Can you put your finger on the reason why he hasn't had a good season? Not really, no. I mean, if I could put my finger on it, I would have cured it. <laughs> You've got a smile on your face, so presumably you think the British team are going to go there with the best, two best drivers we've got. I think they're going to go there with the two best drivers on the result of this season, yes. And with a chance maybe of picking something up there? Again, Calgary's difficult because of the, of the draw at Calgary will make an awful lot of difference. If you get a good draw, you've got a good chance. If you get a bad draw, it's going to be very difficult at Calgary. Simon, as Secretary of the British Bobsleigh Association, how do you weigh up the season? With the advent of the Foster's World Cup Series, we've seen a tremendous increase in the success of the British team. We now see a position whereby Nick Phipps, who came sixth in the two and four men world championships last year, might not even get a ride at Calgary. This has been due to the athletes themselves and also to the backup. What, in my opinion, we need now is a British designed and built bobsleigh. They're now high tech designs and we cannot rely on other people's equipment however much we put in ourselves. Great disappointment for Nick Phipps, but he'll be out in Calgary as reserve, which means that we can't console him with our comprehensive coverage of